Kiki. Morning, everybody. Morning. Hi. The fundamental practice of presence, taking your seat like a queen, taking your seat like a king, has to do with proclaiming your dignity as a human being. The stunning gift, the amazing gift that you're given of life itself, as simple as that. You sit, you hold your posture, and you sort of melt. You sort of Proclaim yourself on the one hand and notice your mind and body rejoining and how the, it seems to be tinged with a certain kind of sadness, a certain kind of welcoming to yourself and to the world. But that has a tinge of sadness about it, like what an amazing life I have. What an amazing world we're in and how good it feels to have nothing to do. So sit like a king and a queen and fall in love with your life. And I want you to drop your consciousness, drop like if you're thinking right now, if you see you're kind of thinking from your head, you're hearing everything from your head. I want you to drop down and actually put all your presence in your heart. Close your eyes and put all your presence in your heart. When the lungs breathe, they literally encapsulate and massage the heart. It's a, another function of your breathing as it is constantly making love or massaging your heart. So feel the breath expand, encapsulate, and caress the heart as you breathe. Just that simple thing. Allow yourself to really experience this, the breath, massaging, caring for, you could even say making love to the heart. There's two aspects of training your mind. One is the proclamation of perfection. That's starting from the top down. The proclamation or the actual experience. You, you, nobody can tell you that you didn't have that experience. So you have that experience many times a day. I'm just, if I had a sheet of paper and I go, just like I've been doing with an acupuncture needle, if I did it one time, the paper would appear completely dense, right? it still would see dense, right? But if I do it choo, 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 thousands of times, pretty soon you would have the vision of this beautiful beach and the vision of openness and warmth. Now you can feel that this is almost too daring, you could say. It's like, how dare you proclaim that much presence, that much lack of fear, that much lack of anxiety. How dare you? You can feel your mind saying these things. I'll let you worry about this. I'll let you worry about that. And you can feel your mind be anxious just a little bit. And you're so gentle with that mind. You're so calm with that mind that wants to kind of speak to you. When that happens, we're going to give you an anchor, which is the breath. You just come back to the breath. You just notice the breathing, the coming and going of the breath. So you give yourself a little something to do so your mind doesn't go to a natural pattern of kind of worry and anxiety. So you follow the breath in and follow the breath out, paying particular attention to the end of the out breath. And finally, while your heart is being massaged by your lungs, while well, you're being daring enough and you're safe enough to literally do that, to feel your heart being massaged, I would like you to go into some level of appreciation for what's called lineage. 
Normally, a practice like this would be started by a lineage chant, by thanking people who have sacrificed so that these teachings, these teachings about presence, these teachings about happiness, which are considered the very, very, very highest teachings, a whole lineage. But if I think of my lineage, of course, my, my mother, my father come up, my grandparents, my third grade teacher, my Dharma teachers. I want you to think about everybody that has helped you, the line of energy that has gotten you to this place where you are daring enough to proclaim your dignity, to proclaim being in love with your world. So many people helped you, and I want you to consider all those people, big and small, this line of energy, your rooting, your team, your uh, fans, you could say. I want you to touch on them and thank them. Because the glue that holds everything together is the compassion. The reason that everything stays together and spins is the compassion. So that's the, the closer that you get to your own wisdom and your compassion, the happier you get. And that's the, you could say in one sentence, that which keeps us separate, thinking that we're separate from that wisdom and compassion is some sort of story that we've told ourselves for a long time. Those stories vary from very harmful things that happened to you as a child to this kind of ubiquitous, feeling that you're dirty or separate or not nice or all these stories, these things that separate you. That's what we're going to start deconstructing and the first tool that we're using to deconstruct those is the sitting meditation where you don't start, you start depowering thought. Happiness, believe it or not, is considered the highest teachings to tell you the truth. The proclamation of your perfection is considered the highest, highest teaching. That there's, n that there's nowhere that you can ever get away from your own wisdom and compassion is considered the highest teachings. It takes a certain kind of moxie, you could almost say, to proclaim that. So again, we're doing that sandwich of that proclamation along with the deconstruction of the story. And that's what the path is called. So when I say you're built from wisdom, your body is built from wisdom and compassion, I know at first you say, oh, these are uh, nice sounding words, or that's a concept, he doesn't really mean that. No, I mean utterly that. For instance, we don't think of this miracle. In Christianity, as you know, this body is called a temple. Right now you have 60 trillion cells which are choreographed and are doing 10 million functions per second. That means that your body is doing 600 quadrillion bits of information per second. Now is that smart or is that stupid? I mean, in other words, does that take a lot of wisdom and a lot of organization or is that a haphazard thing. That's what you get to inhabit. And you can say, well, God made the body. Okay, well, then you're partly God and you've got a smart thing on your hands. In other words, the human body is this amazing display of wisdom. It's built from wisdom. It's built from, with the ability to organize that much information and everything else is as well built from that wisdom. The second part this miracle, I'm, I'm going to reiterate, this miracle of our human body contains tremendous, tremendous wisdom and you are responsible for that wisdom. You did it. If there's a fourth part of meditation is that you brighten up. You allow yourself to, again, like, be in love with your world, be in love with your life. It's there, you're, you're awake, you're awakening. You're awakening to your dignity, to this beautiful, beautiful thing that you have in front of you, life, this beautiful place. 
And if there's a fifth component, it's again more relaxation, more melting. Again, this is an important piece. I'm going to ask you to review. Do you like the experience of being in your heart and experiencing your senses? Do you like it? Does it bring you happiness? Is there joy there? Do you like it more than, than being up and kind of dull? And you say to yourself, I like this more. I understand. This is being a connoisseur. I like it more to be present with my senses wide open than to be thinking and worrying. You say to yourself, I get it, I like this more. I want to come back here. There's a drunk on Fifth Avenue and a guy walks up to him with a violin and he, he goes, quick, quick, how do I get to Carnegie Hall? How do I get to Carnegie Hall? And the drunk goes, practice, practice, practice. <laughs>